Hi everyone, I'm Jeremy Kuhar, but hopefully you've already been over to the Start Here module, so I've, I've introduced myself there as well. And uh, so this is module one, uh, and I've broken module one up into four short lecture videos just to get us started for the semester. And so um, my goal here is to introduce you to some very kind of common, very basic issues in environmental science. Uh, on the bottom of every lecture that I'll do, I'll have kind of, I'll have the dates of, that the presentation was last updated, and then the date on which the video was recorded as well. Uh, my personal belief is that these things should be updated every, back myself into a box here, but updated every two years or so, depending on current events and all. So I'm kind of forcing myself to, to keep my materials current. Uh, so it's right now April 17th, 2017. So the purpose of this uh, of this presentation is to illustrate just a sampling of some of the issues that we will study this semester in this Biology 103 Environmental Science class. Uh, and specifically, we're looking at ways in which humans influence the environment or the natural world around us, but also ways in which the environment influences us. So in this presentation, I'm going to ask you a couple questions. I guess they're not exactly rhetorical because you can't answer them. You're just not submitting those answers to me. Just, just keep it in your head. As I go on, I'll pause, think about your answer, then I'll give you the, an I'll give you the correct answer, and you can kind of consider whether you got it right or wrong. So question one, does the ozone hole contribute to global warming? Hopefully you said no. Both of these issues are essentially unrelated. There is a tiny bit of overlap. Um, if you've studied greenhouse gases in the past, global warming, yes, ozone itself, uh, O3, oxygen 3, is a greenhouse gas. But the hole in the ozone, does it really is a totally separate issue. Um, global warming is the overall or the average warming of the Earth's atmosphere, typically due to human results and mainly because of carbon dioxide and methane. The ozone hole is a different problem where chemicals that we have produced in the past, uh, these are CFCs, chlorofluorocarbons, typically these were used as um, refrigerants and propellants in spray bottles and things like that. Uh, these CFCs made it all the way up into the upper atmosphere. They chemically broke down these ozone molecules, and that ozone hole has caused significant problems, especially for the southern hemisphere. So question two deals with global warming. Uh, it's right now spring of 2017, and if you remember the spring of 2017, by the time you watch this video, it was an unusually warm spring. So... If we want to pick a single year, yeah, this seems to be global warming in action. It's We've barely had a winter. But to, to make a question here, let's go back to the winter of 2014. This was an unusually warm winter, uh, or maybe, maybe a little more normal in historical terms, but more recently it was unusually cold. This was the winter that Boston had those many feet of snow and had a hard time getting rid of all the snowpack. Um, so, given, given that bad winter, obviously global warming is a hoax, right? Well, no. Hopefully you said, no, that's wrong. Uh, we do know that the Earth's atmosphere has, on average, been warming up fairly consistently for the last hundred years at least. Uh, some will argue that it's just natural warming. When we get to this module, I will argue that it's, it's kind of weird coincidence that the Industrial Revolution happened and the years since, and especially as human population has reached up into the six, seven, seven and a half billion range, uh, it's kind of weird that that temperature overall keeps on going up. So in the lower right hand corner of the screen, you'll see this graphic. Uh, red is northern hemisphere average temperatures, southern hemisphere uh, is in blue. And yeah, there are some ups and downs as you look through that graph, but let me click here. Um, the average, the overall average is still upwards. So when we get to the module on global warming, you'll, you'll see that um, what some critics will do is they'll pick little, um, little bits of that 
Uh, for example, look at the red line, which is Northern Hemisphere, from about 1940 down to about 1980. And it looks like, on average, the global average temperatures were going pretty well down, not up. But then, since the mid-1970s, there's been much more of a consistent increase as well. So climate change deniers, they tend to nitpick, they tend to pick out little bits of data and see, say, ooh, see, this little, this little bit right here uh, means that global warming isn't happening. But you really have to look at the overall huge trend over decades or even uh, the last century or two. Uh, and uh, to finish up global warming here, we know that um, seven, almost seven and a half billion people burning fossil fuels every day for electricity, other energy, um, aluminum smelting, other metal pr production, cars, of course, transportation. These are all adding tremendous amounts of carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. And we know that CO2 is a greenhouse gas. So all this CO2 getting into the atmosphere tends to trap heat like the glass of a greenhouse and it's making our atmosphere warm up more and more every single year. Question three, uh, do you know the current population of humans on Earth? Although I guess I just mentioned it. So it's um, as of uh, two days ago, the uh, population is estimated to be 7.4-ish billion people. I'll show you in a slide or two um, this website, census.gov slash pop clock. It's, um, it, if you go to the actual website, it shows a kind of a rolling ticker, and it's pretty interesting to see just how frequently, how quickly the population of the Earth goes up by one, two, five, ten people. Um, not quite question three, so let's call this question three and a half. Um, what are the five most populous countries in the world? Number one, China, 1.4 billion. India, 1.3 billion. Third, our home, United States. 327 million. Those other two countries are more than four times more populous than the United States. Indonesia, 261 million. Brazil, 207-ish million people. So again, these are as of two days ago. So if you go to that pop clock, oh, I'm sorry, um, census.gov slash pop clock website, this is just a screenshot, but you would see these tickers in action. And then in the um, kind of the lower right-hand side here, one birth every couple seconds. This is for the United States. And you'll actually see these little blue bars moving, and um, it's all animated. And it's pretty interesting to kind of just see just how many people there are on the planet and how quickly the population is going up. And this is a graphic just to finish up this population thing. This graphic shows population centers around the world. Uh, the more red the portions of the map, the more densely populated they are. So China, of course, especially the eastern two-thirds of China. Uh, India. Um, Indonesia is down here. Uh, all these kind of volcanic islands down in this part of the country. Uh, sorry, this part of the world. Uh, Japan is pretty densely populated, even though there's not a, land, a lot of land there. Uh, Europe as a whole is pretty densely populated. And the Middle East, but of course these are many different countries. So those individual countries don't show up on that top five list that I just showed you. United States, Mexico, you know, and so on. Question four. Solar energy will be the solution to all of our energy needs, right? No. Um, renewables are great, solar energy is great, but solar energy alone has its drawbacks. Other renewable sources have their drawbacks. And no one renewable source will be the single silver bullet to all of our energy problems. When we talk about renewable energy later in the semester, you'll kind of we'll, we'll talk about a whole bunch of them, and they all need to work in conjunction. We need to rely on many of them at the same time. To um, my my three month old daughter is back there crying, and my mother in law is trying to take care of her, so that's a little distracting. Um, so, um, yeah, we'll talk about how all these different renewable sources need to be used together. Uh, we can't just rely on any one of those. Uh, question five on the next slide, I'm going to show you a graphic, and this actually goes back to global warming. So, has anybody seen this before? I'll wait for your answer. No. So, um, on the y-axis here, we have carbon dioxide concentration in the atmosphere in units of parts per million. Uh, running from 300 to 400 um, parts per million. And then along the x-axis, 1950 through today, 
and what we see is an up and down, up and down, but a very consistent increase overall in the concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. This is one of our um, major pieces of evidence towards global warming. Uh, that CO2 again is coming from the bur burning of fossil fuels. Um, and there is an overall upward trend, but the yearly ups and downs uh, are actually caused by seasonal changes. And I think it's um, summer, we see a, a, a rise in CO2, and then in the winter it goes down a little bit, but then the very next summer it goes up even more, and then it goes back down for the winter, and then the next summer. And you get this oscillating back and forth, but overall it just keeps on going up. So in this presentation I just did a couple, um, global warming, uh, other topics, things that we'll talk about this semester. There's so much more that we will talk about. And there's even more that we won't talk about just because uh, there's too, not enough time in the semester. We, we probably won't talk about ozone depletion. This, uh, it's still a thing today, but not quite so much as other environmental issues. Global warming, of course, that's a biggie. We have an entire module for that. Population growth is next week, next module. Um, fossil fuels, renewable resources, I think I have that broken down into three or four weeks. And then um, carbon pollution, which actually mostly goes along with global warming. But these are just some of the topics we'll be talking about this semester.